Hi, Sarah here again. Um, another video for you. I want to show you um, some tips and tricks on how to thread your needles. A lot of people have trouble with this, so I have a few little tips that hopefully um, you'll find useful. Um, so let's zoom in and have a look. Right, so I'm just going to demonstrate the principle first. I've got a very large needle here and a large perle thread, just so you can see the process, and then I'll show you again on a smaller needle. So what we need to do first is to just give ourselves a nice clean end to the thread that can get very fluffy and worn here and that won't go through the the eye of the needle. So we're just going to cut that nice and clean first. I've got a sharp pair of embroidery scissors about 45 degrees. Nice sharp snip to give you a nice clean end. Now, I'm right-handed, so I usually put the thread in my right hand. I have seen people do this the other way around, so you'll just need to try it and see what works best for you. Now, a lot of times I see people trying to do this, so they have the thread pointing away for them, and they try and make it go through the eye. And you can see the thread bending there. That's just not going to go through there. So the trick is to pull up this thread between your thumb and your finger and turn it to face you so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to pull that up really tightly so I can only just see the very end of it. And then I'm going to take the needle, there's the eye, you can see the eye, flat to that thread, pinching it really tight between the pads of my thumb and my finger, not between my nails, between the pads. Take the needle up to the thread and you need to open up your thumb in your finger like so. And there it is through the eye. Okay, I'll do that once more. Now you can see that end's gone a little bit frayed, so I'll cut that again. So 45 degrees, nice sharp snip. Pull it up between the pad of my thumb and my finger point it towards you, you can, so you can see what you're doing, pinching it really tightly there. Needle to the thread, pinch it tight, open up your thumb and your finger, and it goes through the eye. If you're having trouble getting the end through the eye, a good idea is to use a block of beeswax. Try not to lick the end because licking the end just makes it go soggy and doesn't help. The beeswax will actually stick the fibres together and make it stiffer as well. You can just place it on the beeswax, pull it through. That's actually quite stiff now. You should find that helps. So again, between the pad of your thumb and your finger, Hive the needle up to it, open out your thumb and your finger, and there you have through the eye. I'll demonstrate that now with some different threads and some different needles. We'll use the same needle but a different thread now, so I'll use some wool. This is cruel wool, so it's a two-ply wool, two pieces spun together. And what can happen now, this end does fray a lot with wool. It's a lot harder to get that through as it is. So the best way to thread wool is to actually fold it around the needle and make that sharp end instead of cutting it. So I'm going to fold it around the eye. Now I'm going to fold it around the narrowest part, not the widest part. Turn your needle so it goes around the narrowest part. Slide that off the end and there's my fine end of thread to pass through like we did before. So again, eye of the needle to the end of the thread, open up your thumb and your finger, and there you have it through the needle. So I'll just show you that one more time. Underneath the needle, fold it round, round the narrow part of the needle, not the wide part, the narrow part, slide it off, eye to the thread, open your thumb and your finger and pull straight through. Now I shall try that on some smaller needles. So 
this is a cruel needle number five and the wool should be fine for this so again I'm going to fold it around this needle so exactly the same principle just a smaller eye now so around the thin part slide it off take the eye to the thread open up your thumb and your finger and it goes through this is a number seven cruel needle to use the same wool. This is a little bit harder now, um, so we'll try the same principle, see if we can thread that. So wrap it around, slide it off, and through it goes. Now I can actually feel that now is just wearing that thread ever so slightly just feel it when I pull it through. So that's right on the limit of the size needle you can go to for this wool now. So let's try a smaller needle and a different thread. I'm going to show you a different thread now. This is a stranded cotton. So this consists of six strands here. And this can be a bit harder to thread because as you can see they separate out. So I'm going to try it as well with a number nine embroidery needle. This is a good all-round standard needle to use for embroidery projects. You probably use this quite a lot. Now six strands is not going to go into a number nine, so I'm going to just separate these strands out into two lots of three. So separate them at the ends. I'm just going to thread the three through. But again, let's cut those at a nice sharp angle. Now they've separated out a little bit, so I'll just run it through the beeswax as well. We'll just stick them together a little bit like so. They're quite wiry. That should go through no problem. So these are too thick to thread around, fold around the needle, so I'm going to go back to the pinch method and just draw those ends up between my thumb and my finger. Take the eye of the needle to the threads. Open up my thumb and my finger. And there you have it. Okay, one more for you because this one is a little bit tricky as well. So this is unspun silk floss. Now this has not been twisted when it's been made. So again, it's hard to see because it's very fine, but the fibres tend to come apart a little bit. And this one is very delicate. So I'm going to use a number 10 embroidery needle for this. So we're getting a little bit smaller again. And I find the best way to do this thread, rather than use the beeswax, which is a bit heavy for such a fine thread, I tend to dampen a kitchen towel and just run the end of the thread through the towel. Now that sticks the fibres together, just long enough for you to thread it and stitch with it. So same principle, pinch it tightly, there it goes. And then that will just dry naturally back to its original state. If you have any real trouble threading your needle, even with this method, and do practice this because practice does, does help, but if you do have any trouble, just use the next size needle up, make the needle um, bigger for the thread that you're using um, and hopefully that will help you.